Hello and welcome to the first UK drive, first impressions of the brand new Jeep Avenger. This is the first electric car coming from a quite historic car brand, Jeep. This is going to be made in Europe and it's going to be made for the European market. So sorry Americans, you're not going to be able to buy this just yet. If that's going to change in the future, uh, we don't know. But without further ado, let's start with the design, talk about the design of the car, we'll talk about the interior, the space, the charging experience and also the drive experience as well, especially on the UK roads. On the front, I think it looks very sharp. It looks very Jeep. In fact, we have the Jeep logo on there. We have the seven slots grill on the front, which is something we've known with uh, Jeep for a long time. We have a, a LED DRL here as well, which if they've raised up high, just to give it an impression that this car is actually higher off the ground than it actually is. And I love the colorway. I love the mixture of the yellow, the black, and then even the silver bit on the bottom here. I think it looks fantastic. This car is going to be very attractive on the road when we do see this. And we even have the, this um, E logo here, which just lets you know that this is electric. So if you see this on the road, the only two things I will let you know this is an electric car would be the number plate with a green uh, tab on there and this E logo uh, on the front. Moving over to the side, we would notice the uh, black wheel arches there. This makes it look a bit rugged. At the end of the day, it's Jeep. It's meant to be good for off-roading and it's meant to be good as well for when you just drive on normal roads and city urban environments. So it gives you that for a bit of protection. And then we move over further. We have that Avenger, which has hints of blue all around the logo itself. It looks really nice, nice and placed on the side. And then I love the little tiny little bit of creases that's on there. We have this black cladding in here, which is useful again, for protection for the paintwork, bodywork. So if you notice, it kind of sticks out a little bit, just so that if you were to hit something on the side, it's gonna be okay. And then we have really nice ground clearance, like I was talking about earlier. You can see there, really, really, really nice. High off the ground, a bit of a Jeep logo on there. And these are rocking the 18 inch alloys. So if you were to go for the summit trim level like this one, this is sort of alloys that you get a standard so 18 inch, which looks really good as well. I love what they've done with some of the details all around the car. For example, if we look here, it's got that seven slot grill and headlights as well from old Jeep uh, cars. So it resembles what the front grill looks like on there. There's no sticking out door handles uh, on the back door. So here we have a flush door handle, which adds to that drag coefficient. So when it comes to the range that we're going to be getting and how efficient it's going to be, that helps with that. And it's a really nice design. Look at that, it just opens up. Again, plastic material on there, giving it that rugged look. And then moving over to the back, we have our spoiler there as well. And then one thing to notice here is the headlights, sorry, the tail lights here, which has the X on there as well. So again, very, very Jeep in terms of design. We have the black cladding on here again, and that silver finishing on the bottom half there. We also have the E logo as well on the back there again, just to specify that this is an electric vehicle. So to open up the boot, especially in the Summit version, you also get uh, easy entry so you can use your feet to sort of kick uh, below and then that will open up the boot. And it works first time, works each and every time. So as you can see at the moment, we have the camera bag here. So if you want to take this away on a weekend uh, break, you'll be able to fit your luggage here easily. And for the boot space numbers, you're looking at 355 litres of boot space here before you fold the seat down. And if you fold the seat down, no one's sitting at the back, then you have plenty more space to fit more things in there. What I also love is the opening. It's very big as well, so it's easy to get things in and out. And there's barely any lip on here as well, so it's easy to slide things into the, into the boot if you need to do so. And then underneath here, you can also store your charging cable. There's a little opening compartment. You can even open furthermore the space underneath there to store something else that you're not going to be using quite often. So that's very important. But overall, I think it's a decent space. It's not the biggest of space when you compare it to its competitors. So, you know, like the likes of Kia, uh, E-Niro and the uh, Kona and so on, and even the likes of MG. I think 355 is still still decent, decent amount of space. In the back area, there's barely any new room here for me and I'm 5 foot 11 and the front seat right now, the driver's seat is actually in my sitting position. So anyone who's around six foot, for example, or 5'11 even, you might not want to sit like this or sit in the back for a long period of time because there's barely any, any new room here. For headroom though, we have plenty of those. Like there's no problems there at all. Uh, backrest or headrest there can be moved upwards so you can sit a bit more comfortably well, but that space there will be an issue. There's also a transmission tunnel here. So that means whoever sat in the middle will have to raise their knee quite uh, high up. Um, so that's another issue there. Plenty of space for my feet so I can tuck my feet away. There's a USB-C port here to charge my device if I'm sat at the back. But if you have kids though, I think you'll be all right because there's plenty of space for smaller people uh, or shorter people uh, for that matter. So if they want to do that, they can. There's loads of plastic material in here and that's because it's going to make it easier to clean. So if you're going to be taking this on off-roading or just areas where you might get things dirtier very easily, then this is great. It's not a problem at all. So I wouldn't say that's an issue when it comes to the premium fill in the back here. Up front, everything feels very cozy here in terms of just how you feel with the space up front. We have plenty of space to store things. So we have 
There could be a hole here where you can store things. You can fit most of my hands in there. That's how deep it is. Uh, it's also your armrest, so you can easily just uh, slide this forward or backwards just to get as comfortable as you want for your elbow. And then in here, we have space to store, you know, different things. So you can have up to three cups there easily, three cans like so. And you can also adjust the actual arrangement in there so that you can have more space uh, to store things. You have a button for your parking here, electronic parking, um, and you also got a drive mode switch here. So you can switch between different drive mode, including sand, eco and sports and so on. And then over here, I like what they've done with it. So let me just take this out completely. So it's easy to see. Um, you can detach it. I don't think you're meant to all the time, but you can detach it if you need to. But this feels like one of those iPad uh, folio case situation so you can fold that over as you wish to do so and it's got that X design on there as well nice soft material on there so attention to detail and then underneath that we have one full USB-A port we have a USB-C port and again in this uh, Summit version we have a wireless charging area here for your smartphone so if your phone like this one's compatible you can just drop your phone there and that fits this is a really big phone, Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra, and uh, that fits really well with no issues at all. There's also a cigarette lighter uh, socket here, so you can plug in things to clean up the car, whatever. And here we have some buttons as well to go from park, reverse, neutral, drive, and you also have the B mode as well for energy recuperation. Uh, so all there, easily reachable, and it's just there. So you, once you get used to that, you can easily just press it without even looking. And we have some more manual buttons here, so for your climate control. So again, easily reachable for the driver and the passenger as well, and volume control there. So I'm glad that's there, so you don't have to dig in in the menu to figure out where all those things are. Then we have your ventilation here. There's also a big space here where you can store things. So if you have some phones, passengers can drop it there, you can drop it over there as well. Really nice and neat, I love that. There's plenty of space in here, and you've got your glove compartment there to store things as well. There's some buttons there to go on the infotainment system for home, and your um, safety button there for car settings. And the color schemes carry on here. I think it's like yellow or some sort, so I'll call it like mango yellow or something, but that's not the official color by the way, but it's yellow, you've got Avenger logo on there. But yeah, you have that horizontal feel in the car, it just makes it feel nice and wide and big in here. There's no uh, roof, uh, sorry, sunroof here, unfortunately, and there's no head up display, but we do get two 10.25 inch uh, displays here. So for the infotainment system and the instrument cluster, and they're quite responsive as well in comparison to what I've seen in the likes of the Peugeot, for example, I think it's quite responsive and uh, they look very sharp. I love the graphics. So on the steering as well, it's very nice and comfortable, very nice soft material. I quite like that. Just a little bit of flat bottom, but not fully flat, but it just allows for easier entry into the car. And we have some buttons here for your cruise control and on the side of media control and phone call and voice control uh, on there. So you can easily just press this and then you can change the radio station that you want and change the volume as well and so on and so forth. But the main display here just gives you the important information that you need to know, like your battery level, uh, your charging mode and the power usage consumption there and how many miles you got left and all that kind of stuff and road sign uh, speed, for example. I think everything that we want to talk about is mainly here. This is where the, all the magic happens. This is your infotainment system, which is nice and responsive. So for example, as you can see there, you have your reverse camera. Uh, for when you need to back out spaces. So you can see there, you can see all around the back and the front. There's even settings here to change things like your brightness levels and the sound that comes with how close you get to the wall and stuff like that. So yeah, if you're in any apps like phone, for example, you can always press this home button and that will take you back to the main screen. And we have this car button here. So when you press that, it gives you your ADAS system. So we have Flame Keep Assist uh, currently on there, for example. Uh, we can go to function and then see more options that's available here in terms of safety. So we have close uh, obstacle detection, lane keep assist, automatic braking system, traction control, speed limit recognition, traffic, traffic sign recognition, blind spot alert, driver attention alert. So you have a lot of safety features on here to make sure that you're nice and safe on the road. Go back home, you can see how responsive this is. Whilst also just remaining nice and minimalist, it's not overwhelming in terms of what you can do uh, with it. You can go into application drawer there, you can see what's available at ADAS, climate control, uh, navigation and so on. With this as an option, you can pay for TomTom Tom sat uh, satellite navigation, although you do have screen mirroring, so this supports wireless, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as well. There's even seat options so you can have heated seats in here, uh, but this is a Summit Edition, so you get all that full whack of uh, options available to you. If you go back home, um, we go across again, you can see your map there, all these widgets are there for you to easily just tap things away. Again, easily reachable, nice and bright, really cool. I even like the clock here with the little Jeep uh, logo on there as well. On that little corner there, we see the drive mode that we currently have it in. So we have in sport mode, for example. So if I was to switch this, we have sports, uh, normal, uh, eco, sand, mud, snow. So they won't change on there as I'm, as I'm flicking it, but if I left it on snow, 
that should uh, update to snow as like so and then if we put it back to sports mode or even normal and then this will change shortly um, like so so this will show you things like your energy flow your statistics in terms of how your energy consumption is over there so you can go back and change different things on here consumption over different amount of time and you can have a look at your charging information as well so if you want to see what charging is like that's where you set up all those things but yeah nice and straightforward nice and easy to use which is what you want people that this is aimed at in terms of the car you want it to be nice and easy to use right so i guess that's it really for the interior space and what it's about in here so next thing to do is let's hit the road and see what this feels like to actually drive on the uk roads one thing that's funny in here is the indicator sound of this car i think it's actually quite funny it sounds like someone's beatboxing so flick it on it's got to be a bass to it as well <laughs> so some uh, stats for you to get out of the way. We do have a 54 kilowatt hour battery in here and uh, Jeep says that's capable of doing up to 249 miles on the WLTP. Uh, but for city, um, you're looking at around 342 miles on the WLTP. If it's going to do that in the real world, that's a totally different story. Uh, but you can charge it up very quickly using that 100 kilowatt charging capability. You have a 11 kilowatt um, on board charging. So that's good as well for those who wants to charge at home or overnight. In terms of power, you're looking at 156 horsepower. So that's 115 kilowatt uh, in terms of power, 260 Newton meters of torque and zero to 62 in 9.6 seconds with a top speed uh, maxing out at 93 miles per hour. So what does that mean for you in the real world though, is that you'll be able to reach those speeds uh, very quickly at, you know, it's not, it's very modest, but it's fine. I think this car where it shines for me is when you're driving around the city. I think it feels really nice and comfortable. I like the sitting position. There's no lumbar support here, uh, for example, weirdly, um, but there's no lumbar supports, but Regardless, it still feels really nice and comfortable, I think. I think uh, the sitting out is really good. Good visibility all around, you know, sit, looking through the front, uh, looking through my mirrors and stuff like that. I can see everything very clearly, which I really like. When it comes to handling, there are different drive modes that you can have on here, like we spoke about earlier. If you're putting in sports mode, it adds a bit of weight to the steering, which is really nice. It's better weighted in the way that I like my steering to be. But when you change the drive mode to the, something that's not sports like normal, the steering goes super light, uh, which is good for, again, sitting driving uh, if you were like an older person for example that might be good for less effort in terms of turning around and moving the car on the road and stuff like that it's got a great turning circle as well which is good it just adds to the practicality of what the car is all about uh, driving on this road of course if you can be buying this for the uk roads how does it feel you have those air suspension which handles uh, the potholes and just the rough roads handles it very well which i think is good it's nice and comfortable where that does affect it uh, in a negative way for me would be when you start cornering and stuff, even though you put in sports mode, adds a bit of acceleration uh, in terms of response, adds a bit of weight to the steering, but it doesn't mean you feel connected uh, to the road. There's a lot of body roll when you're going around corners and stuff like that. But again, I don't think anyone buying this will be doing some crazy speeds that require them to uh, be aware of their body roll and stuff like that. But if you take that out of the equation, I think this is nice and comfortable. Um, it's very practical. I like the, the amount of range you can get out of this on the WLTP. I think that's spot on. Uh, but yeah, I think visibility is good. Sitting high is good as well. General driving experience, I think, is spot on for what this car is all about. Um, I mean, I love a bit more speed, but it's fine. And by the way, this is actually only available in front wheel drive only so we're not going to be getting all wheel drive experience in this jeep unfortunately one thing to point out when you're driving though is the road noise so it isn't too much but what you do notice though is like a little whistling that's coming from i think the air that's blown over the mirror or something so as i'm driving i can just hear this which <laughs> can be annoying at times. So that's something to bear in mind. So that's it for the all new Jeep Avenger. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you have any questions, drop them there as well. I'll do my best to answer those questions. Uh, but in the meantime, please do subscribe, like, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.